What's up guys, Kittlekicks here bringing you episode number 7 of this Crystal Palace FIFA 16 career mode. Now before this episode begins, a couple of things I do want to mention. First of all, it's been a while but we are now back on Twitch and we will be streaming hopefully on a regular basis, time permitting. We've started a separate career mode, you guys voted and it will be Bournemouth. So for those of you that enjoy the uh, the series on YouTube and have a Twitch account, make sure you head over to twitch.tv forward slash kizzlekick7 and get involved with that career mode as well. We'll be streaming hopefully at least three nights a week. Keep an eye on my Twitter and uh, I'll keep you updated on that front. And also, I just want to say a massive thank you to all your support uh, that you guys have shown to this channel and this series so far. So keep that up, guys, um, and hopefully we'll keep getting the content out there and keep enjoying this career mode. But as you can see, we're facing a, a tough trip at the moment to White Hart Lane to begin this, uh, this episode, facing a very good... Tottenham side and you can see Dembele link up well with uh, with Danny Rose there 25 minutes on the clock and his effort hits the outside of the post fortunately for us the score remains at nil nil but just before the half hour mark Christian Eriksen had the chance to show off his set piece ability it was quite a long way out so you wouldn't really expect him to cause McCarthy too many problems from that and he managed to uh, to make the save comfortably but Tottenham by far the better team in this first period Harry Kane there being denied McCarthy knocking the ball out for a corner. We didn't really get going at all in that first half. A very, very poor performance from us. Something that we will be looking to uh, to rectify in the second half. We don't make any changes straight away, but as you can see, we start the second half a lot brighter. Jamie Bardi um, getting through the defence. It's a good save from Vaughan. He kind of sits on it, uh, and the rebound is smashed out for a throw-in. But we keep up the pressure. Kabai um, showing good uh, persistence, if you like, to get into the box. He goes down after a tangle with Dembele. Claims for a penalty, but the referee waves away the protest. But we're still on the ascendancy here. Uh, long ball forward from Suarez. Vardy does well to win the header. Balassi has the ball inside. Plays it back to Vardy, who shows good pace and persistence. Goes past his man, past one, past the second. And he's brought down by Jan Vertonghen. And the referee points straight to the penalty spot. It's a definite penalty, but I do have some sympathy for Vertonghen because it's actually the collision with Balassi that puts him off balance and sends him clattering into Jamie Vardy. But we're not complaining. It gives Kabai, the skipper, the opportunity to give us a lead from the spot, which he does confidently, sending Vaughan the wrong way. So just after the hour mark, you can say the second half has been a lot brighter, but probably on the whole, we don't deserve this lead. But we'll take it at White Hart Lane. 25 minutes left, 1-0. And in an attempt to uh, to keep our lead, we make a double change, a double substitution. Wilfred Zaha and Berahino going off, being replaced by Sacco and Sincraven. A bit of fresh legs, creativity, power as well with uh, with Sacco. He hasn't really delivered, I've said it before, but hoping that he can put together some good performances and show exactly what he's capable of. And he almost does it here, involved immediately, striking one from around about 20 yards. Um, Vaughan somehow catapults himself up into the top corner and manages to, to tip the ball over. But... 15 minutes to go, you can see Spurs starting to put the pressure on. I'm glad Zuma didn't really get a proper contact on that, otherwise it could have been embarrassing. But just over 10 minutes left, they whip another ball into the box. It's Suarez who gets caught underneath it, and that man, Harry Kane, is not going to miss a chance like that at this stage of the game. And his celebration shows just how much it meant to him. Running over to the substitutes, the whole Spurs squad kind of celebrating together. They know that we've been the better side in the second half and uh, that's the first real chance they've created in this second 45 minutes and it's annoying to concede so late on in the game we look set to take all three points but if we're going to do it now we're going to have to score again so after that we make another change Dwight Gale coming on to replace Vardy who's had a very good game to be honest he's worked hard he won the penalty of course um, but we're hoping the fresh legs of Gale might be able to get us in behind the Spurs defence to grab the winning goal that we're looking for. But it was actually Spurs um, that, that came forward, really. They got momentum following that equaliser. Adebayor goes past Joel Ward far too easily. Hits a fierce shot and McCarthy kind of claws it out. It looked as though it was borderline uh, over the line. But somehow he manages to, to turn it behind for a corner. Um, and speaking of corners, we don't really deal with the, the delivery. McCarthy punches the ball down and Toby Alderweireld has an effort. Um, a headed effort nearly gives his side the lead, but Dwight Gale almost nicks it for us late on. His work ethic is nearly rewarded for that. It was a back pass to Vorm. His first touch was a bit heavy, and he goes to clear it and smashes it straight, straight even, against Dwight Gale. But that's where it finished. Tottenham 1, Palace 1. Annoying, like I said, to concede so late. It feels like two points dropped, but 
I suppose in the grand scheme of things, a point at White Hart Lane isn't a bad result at all. And you can see some training now. I really love this feature. It gives you the chance to actually develop uh, your squad and uh, improve the younger players as well. And that was a fairly successful effort. Nobody getting below a C. Uh, and I simulated it all. If you, you don't want to play the games, you don't have to. Um, the players still do benefit. But now we welcome West Brom to Selhurst Park. No disrespect to them, but it is a game I feel that we should win. Jamie Vardy leading the line again, you can see. Other than that, not too many changes. Your punchin's taking that wide left place ahead of Yannick Balassi. Looking at the West Brom squad, those of you that follow Chesnoy Gaming will know that Rondon um, is a dangerous player. You've got James McLean, um, Sessegnon, Jakob, Serge Gnabry, and plenty of players there that are capable of causing us problems. But we get off to a really bright start, a long ball over the top, pinpoint pass to find Wilfred Zaha, who sidesteps his man, gets into the area, the pass is blocked. He then has a sort of collision as such with, with Olsen, and the referee ends up pointing to the spot for the second consecutive game. Johan Kabai is going to have the chance to get himself on the score sheet and give us the lead. You can see there is definitely contact, but Saha does make a meal of it. But once again, we're not complaining as long as Kabai can dispatch this from the spot, which he does. Ben Foster goes the right way, but kind of dives underneath and away from the ball. It's a bit of a strange one, but uh, we're, we're one up inside seven minutes, so dream start. And looking at this replay, you can see what I mean from uh, Ben Foster. Kabai, just a little bit of lift. On the penalty, had it have gone lower, it'd have been a comfortable save for Foster. Wasn't particularly in the corner, but we are one nil up, fortunately. But West Brom, they they look to hit back almost immediately. It's Sessegnon with the effort from distance, and McCarthy with a very very good save to divert the ball behind. But we don't deal with the corner once again. I think we're going to have to do some defensive training on set pieces. And Jakob's header um, looked threatening, but it actually trickled wide of the mark. But West Brom. We're coming forward again and Zuma kind of put a stop to the attack in a very unique way. This wouldn't be out of place on a rugby pitch. Nowhere near the ball. Just send his man crashing off the pitch. But all jokes aside, they nearly um, get themselves level from the set piece. The ball falls to Johnny Evans of all people. who hits a very good shot, showed good technique. Um, that was heading for the bottom corner. But again, McCarthy manages to, to force the ball behind. And you can see here we're still inside the opening half hour of the game. And West Brom have responded brilliantly to going behind. Sessegnon really should have got the equaliser for them there. Getting behind the defensive line far too easily for our liking. Something we're going to have to put a stop to as well. But we have a chance at the other end. It's Sinkraven putting the, the defence under pressure. Wins possession back. Couldn't quite wrap his foot around the ball the way he would have liked to. But again, as we approach half-time, just eight minutes remaining now, we start to gain control of the game again. Wilfred Saha getting behind the defence. Decides to strike one at goal. It looked to be heading into that far top corner, but just goes a few inches wide. Incredibly unlucky. Really good effort from him. He's been a threat so far the entire game. And you can see from the replay just how close that was but West Brom are going to have the chance to get level in first half stoppage time they've got the ball out wide they love putting crosses into that box McCarthy clatters the striker claims for a penalty none given and the half does end there so it's Palace 1 West Brom nil at half time it's been a, a really entertaining first half actually in comparison to, to some of the 45 minutes we've seen so far this year but second half didn't really uh, live up to the, the first half hype. We're going to make a substitution on the hour mark. It's Kennedy, who hasn't seen a lot of first team action. He is on loan from Chelsea. Very young player, good potential. He's going to come on to replace Daly, Sincraven. But we move into the last 20 minutes of the game and West Brom had their first real attack of the second half. Sessegnon, you can see here, he's very dangerous, quick feet. Um, plays the ball inside to Gamboa, who lays it off to uh, Gardner. Uh, Craig Gardner just smashes the ball past McCarthy before he can react. And West Brom have got themselves level with just over 15 minutes remaining. So very similar pattern to the Spurs game with us taking the lead from the penalty spot and not being able to, to hold out for the three points. Um, of course, there is still 15 minutes left, so we have got the chance to, to get the three points. You can see we are we are prompted into a change. It's Berahino and Balassi coming on this time for Wilfred Saha and Jamie Vardy again being replaced. Quite unlucky to be replaced. He worked really hard again, but you can see Saha particularly disappointed that he was withdrawn from the game. But West Brom um, seemed to be galvanised from that equaliser. You can see Jakob here having an effort that trickles past the post. And Jason Punchin at the other end got himself behind the defence. But Serge Gnabry just brushes him off the ball very, very easily. Really disappointing from uh, our point of view. Um, but Punchin picks up the ball again this time. He plays the ball uh, into the channel. It's Kabai who gives chase. No foul given. And he puts the ball on a plate for James MacArthur to apply the finish, which he cannot do. It comes back off the inside of the post. That looked set to be a certain goal and would surely have given us all three points. But as it stands, game finished. Palace 1, 
West Brom won, so a really, really disappointing result for us. Should have won that game. No disrespect to West Brom, of course, but as a game we really need to be winning if we are going to be up there or thereabouts come the end of the season. But we're going to end the episode in the usual way, guys, with a look at the Premier League table. And it's Everton still going great guns at the top there. Six wins, two defeats, and they find themselves top. Three points clear of second place Bournemouth, who are level with Chelsea, Arsenal and Spurs, who make up the top five. You've got Southampton in sixth, United ahead of us. And we sit in 8th place. But the season's going okay so far. Three wins, four draws, which is where we've dropped a lot of our points. If we can start turning those draws into victories, then all well and good. We should uh, really, really be putting the pressure on the, the teams in the European places. But like I said, that's where we're going to end this episode, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you're new. Drop a like to the video. If we can hit sort of 15 likes, that would be awesome. Keep showing love to the series. And I'll see you in the next episode.